Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 5.3, Estimate Quotients. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you estimate decimal quotients? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to lesson 5.3, found on page 105, and let's get started. Now, let's take a look at question number one. For question number one, they give us the problem 19 and 7 tenths divided by 3. Our job is going to be to use compatible numbers. Now remember, compatible numbers are numbers that are close to the given numbers that make it easier to calculate in your head. So our job is going to be to use compatible numbers to estimate the quotient. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the two numbers that are given. So I have 19 and 7 tenths being divided by 3. Well, I know that if I keep my 3 as my divisor, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to list multiples of my 3. So I'm going to start out and list my multiples over to the side. So multiples of 3 are 3, then I have 6, I have 9, 12, 15, 18, and then I'll go up one more and I also have 21. Now what I know is 19 and 7 tenths falls right in between my 18 and my 21. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose that 18 because 18 is a little bit closer to 19 and 7 tenths than 21. And so what we do is we're going to turn 19 and 7 tenths into 18. And I know that 18 divided by 3 is going to leave me with an estimated answer of about 6. Now what I also want to point out to you is this. When you estimate quotients with compatible numbers, the number you use for the dividend. Now remember, the dividend here is 19 and 7 tenths that number can be greater than the dividend or it could be less than the dividend. And in this case, we chose 18, which is a number less than the given dividend. Now, let's take a look at question number two. Our job, once again, is to use compatible numbers to estimate the quotient. And once again, compatible numbers are numbers that are close to the given numbers that make it easier to calculate in your head. So for number two, they give us 394 and 6 tenths divided by 9. So I'm now going to choose compatible numbers. Now I'm going to look first at my divisor and my divisor here is a 9. Well, what I know is very close to the number 9 is the whole number 10. And I know that 10 is a really easy number to work with mentally. Now I'm going to look at my dividend. And my dividend is 394 and 6 tenths. So in order to choose a compatible number that works well with the number 10 for my dividend, I'm going to list out some multiples of the number 10. So I'm going to come out to the side and I'm going to list out some multiples, multiples of 10. So I have 10, I have 20, 30, and 40. Now I'm going to stop here because here's what I know. I know that that 39, let's talk about the 39, the first two numbers there, would fall right in between my 30 and my 40. Well, what I know is that 39, that first part of that dividend, is closest to the whole number 40. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn 394 and 6 tenths into the whole number 400. So I'm going to now rewrite that as 400, and I'm going to be dividing that by 10. Well, what I know is I know that 10 goes into 40 four times, and I'm going to add that extra zero there. And so when I divide 400 by 10, my estimated answer turns out to be about 40. Now, let's take a look at question number four. Once again, our job is to estimate the quotient. Now, I'm going to use compatible numbers to help me estimate the quotient. And once again, compatible numbers are numbers that are close to the given number that make it easier to calculate in your head. Well, for question four, they give us 63 and 5 tenths, and we're dividing that by 5. So I'm going to start out first of all by looking at my divisor, which in this problem is the number 5. And what I know is 5 is a pretty easy number to work with mentally. So I'm going to go ahead and keep my 5 a 5. So I'm going to go ahead and write down my 5. Now what I have to decide is what's a number close to 63 and 5 tenths that works well or is compatible with the number 5. So I'm going to come out to the side and I'm going to begin to list out some multiples of 5. So what I have are, I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and 65. Now I'm going to stop here because here's what I know. 
I know that 63 and 5 tenths falls in between 60 and 65. Now, I'm going to go ahead and choose the 65 because I know that 63 and 5 tenths is closest to my 65. So I'm going to turn 63 and 5 tenths into the whole number 65. Now, what I know is this. When I divide 65 by 5, my quotient should turn out to be the following. Let's make a count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I know that when I divide 65 by 5, my estimated answer, my estimated quotient, turns out to be about 13. Now, let's take a look at question number 10 together. Once again, our job is to estimate the quotient, and we're going to use, once again, compatible numbers to help us do that. Well, for question 10, they give us 209 and 3 tenths divided by 48. Now, I'm going to use compatible numbers, numbers that are close to the numbers that are given, that work well together. I'm going to start by looking at my divisor, which is the number 48. And what I know is, there's a whole number close to 48 that's a really easy number to work with mentally. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn that 48 into the whole number 50. Now, let's look at our dividend. Our dividend is 209 and 3 tenths. So what I'm going to do next is, I'm going to list out some multiples of 50 so that I can find a number close to 209 and 3 tenths that works well or is compatible with the number 50. So out to the side, I'm going to begin to list my multiples of 50. So out here I have 50, 100, 150, 200, and I also have 250. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop there because here's what I know. I know that 209 and 3 tenths falls in between 200 and 250. And I know that 209 and 3 tenths is closest to the whole number 200. So I'm going to turn 209 and 3 tenths into the whole number 200. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Now, here's what I know. We can go ahead and make our count. When I divide 200 by 50, my quotient should turn out to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So once again, 200 divided by 50 turns out to be the whole number 4. So my answer is, or my quotient is, about 4. Now, let's take a look at question number 12. Once again, our job is to estimate the quotient, and we're going to once again use compatible numbers to help us do that. Well, for question 12, they give us 256 and 1 tenth divided by 82. Now, I'm going to start out by looking at my divisor, which is 82. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to choose a number close to 82 that's a number that would be easy to work with mentally. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn that 82 into the whole number 80. Because 80 would be a number that would be easy to work with mentally. Now, let's take a look at our dividend. Our dividend is 256 and 1 tenth. So I need to find a number close to 256 and 1 tenth that works well with our 80, that's compatible. So I'm going to come out to this side. I'm going to begin to list out multiples of the number 80. So we're going to start with 80, and then we have 80, we have 160, we have 240, and then we also have 320. Now I'm going to stop here because here's what I know. I know that 256 and 1 tenth falls in between 240 and 320. Now I'm going to choose 240 because I know that 256 and 1 tenth is closer to 240 than it is to 320. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite 256 and 1 tenth as 240. Now when I divide 240 by 80, let's go ahead and make our count and see what our quotient should be. It should be 1, 2, 3. So I know that when I divide 240 by 80, my estimated quotient turns out to be 3. So we have an answer of about 3. Now, let's go back and work question number 8 together. Once again, for question 8, our job is to estimate the quotient. However, number 8 is a little different than the past few problems that we worked together. For question 8, they give us 2 and 8 tenths divided by 6. Now, when I look at this problem, what I notice is, I notice that the divisor, which is 6, is greater than the dividend, which is 2 and 8 tenths. So what I'm going to have to do is this. I'm going to have to rename 2 and 8 tenths as 28 tenths. 
So I'm going to go ahead and write down 28 tenths. So 2 and 8 tenths has now become 28 tenths. Now, what I know is I'm still trying to think about compatible numbers, numbers that are easy to compute mentally. So when I look at the number 28, I know that 28 is close to the number 30. So I'm not going to turn my 28 tenths into 30 tenths. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that now as 30 tenths. So we're going to go ahead and make that 30 tenths. Now, there's our 30 tenths. Now, what I know is, I know that 30 is actually a multiple of 6. So I'm going to leave my divisor as a 6, and I'm going to go ahead and divide my 30 tenths by 6. And when I do that, what happens is my answer turns out to be 5 tenths, which I can also write as, or in decimal form, 0 and 5 tenths. So when I divide 2 and 8 tenths by 6 tenths, my answer turns out to be about 5 tenths. Now, let's take a look at question number 13. It's our first real world problem solving question and number 13 says, Taylor uses 645 and 6 tenths gallons of water in seven days. Suppose he uses the same amount of water each day. About how much water does Taylor use each day? Now, here's what I know we have. We know, first of all, that Taylor uses 645 and 6 tenths gallons of water in seven days. We know that he uses the same amount of water each day. It says about how much water does Taylor use each day. So we're going to take our 645 and 6 tenths gallons of water and we're going to divide that by our 7 days because once again we, can, we want to find the amount of water that Taylor uses each day. Now because they use the word about we know we're going to have to estimate our answer so we're going to think about compatible numbers. Now what I notice is my divisor is a 7 and my dividend is 645 and 6 tenths. And because I know my multiples of 7, I know that when I look at the first two numbers that are given, 64, I know that there is a multiple of 7 close to 64. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out to the side and I'm going to go ahead and list out my multiples of 7. So what I have is I've got 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, and 70. Now, I'm going to stop here because here's what I know. I know that that 64, the first two numbers there in my dividend, falls in between 63 and 70. Well, I'm going to go ahead and choose a 63 because I know that 63 is closer to 64 than it is to our 70. So I'm going to rewrite my dividend as 630. So 645 and 6 tenths now becomes the whole number 630, and I'm going to keep my divisor as the 7. Now, I know that 7 goes into 63 9 times. So I'm going to go ahead and write my 9 down, but then listen, I still have that 0 hanging out behind the 63. So instead of my answer just being a quotient of 9, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that a quotient of 90. So when I divide 645 and 6 tenths, by 7, my estimated answer, my estimated quotient turns out to be about 90. So we're talking about 90 gallons of water that Taylor uses each day. Now let's take a look at question number 14. It's another one of our real world problem solving questions and number 14 says, on a road trip Sandy drives 368 and 7 tenths miles. Her car uses a total of 18 gallons of gas about how many miles per gallon does Sandy's car get? So here's what we know we have. We know that Sandy drives 368 and 7 tenths miles. And her car uses a total of 18 gallons of gas. It says about how many miles per gallon does Sandy's car get? So our problem becomes 368 and 7 tenths and we're going to divide that by the 18 gallons of gas because they want to know once again about how many miles per gallon does Sandy's car get. Now because they use the word about we know that we're also going to need to estimate the quotient. 
Now I'm going to start out by looking at my divisor. My divisor is an 18. And when I think about compatible numbers, I want to choose numbers that are easy to work with mentally. I know that a whole number close to 18 that would be really easy to work with would be the number 20. So I'm going to turn my divisor, which is 18, into the whole number 20. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the first two numbers in my dividend of 368 and 7 tenths. And those first two numbers are 36. So now out to the side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list out some multiples of the number 20. So I'm going to list out 20, and then I'm going to list out 40. Now, I can stop here because here's what I know. I know that that 36, the first two numbers in the dividend, falls in between 20 and 40. And I know that it's actually closer to the 40. So I'm going to rewrite that 36 as the whole number 40. So we're going to turn 36 into a 40. Now I can't forget. My dividend is 368 and 7 tenths. So I can't just turn that into a 40. I've got to make it a 400. So we're not going to divide that 400 by 20. Now, here's what I know. I know that 20 can go into 40 two times. So I'm going to go ahead and write down my 2, but I can't forget. My number is not just 40. It's actually 400. So I have to add that extra zero next to my 2, and my quotient turns out to be 20. So to answer the question, about how many miles per gallon does Sandy's car get? Her car gets about 20 miles per gallon. Now, let's take a look at our homework questions for tonight. I would like you to complete question number 1 and question number 2, as well as numbers 3 through 6 found in your GoMath workbook on page 106. Don't forget to assess yourself. Do you feel like you're number one a novice, number two an apprentice, number three a practitioner, or number four an expert? Make sure you record your number somewhere on your workbook page. Now don't forget your homework for tonight is to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found in your GoMath workbook on page 106. We hope you have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow in class.